next part is the methodology. So in the methodology, what we're going to be doing is explaining the details of how the study was conducted. Now, of course, the study's already over. I mean, we've already executed it, so we know exactly what we did. Hopefully, we kept very good records. We know exactly all the details, and we can write those down. You're going to specifically be showing your methods, the reliability of your methods, the validity, as in statistical validity or measurement validity. These are very important ideas, so reliability and validity and your exact methods. And why are you going to do this? You want to write it so that anybody who reads your paper will be able to repeat what you did, that is replication. If they can repeat what you did, then you have written a good methodology. Inside the methodology, you may have subsections. Why would you have subsections? Well, it's possible that the methodology is very complicated. There are lots of things to it, so you're going to break it into parts. Breaking your methodology into parts is acceptable, and we would just make subsections for that. You need to label them clearly. So you may have a subsection like uh, survey. You may have a subsection like uh, sample. You may have a subsection like human respond respondents or human subjects. Uh, you may have animal subjects. So you break it into different parts. They may include subjects. They may include procedures. They may include the types of manipulations you had. That is, what did you do to the subjects? They may include the machines you use. So you may use an electron microscope in one part, and you may use some kind of fluorescent uh, fluorescing chemical in another part to see things. Sample size is one and your statistical precision is one. And how did you measure? So these measurements may be survey measurements, direct measurements, experimental measurements, things like this. And of course your research design. If your research design has a name, like for example a control group, a test group, then you give it the name that everybody in your field knows. If it doesn't have a name, then you may have to explain it and give it a name, or at least reference it in previous work to somebody who's done something similar. So research design, I think, is very important. A lot of students forget this. They know that they did something, like they gave a survey. They know that they observed something. But my point is, you need to look at the existing literature and see specifically what is the design you undertook? What is the design you used? Is it an experiment, a pseudo-experiment? Is it a uh, interview? Well, what kind of interview? Is it a deep interview? Let's go ahead and try a practice now, and this time let's go ahead and practice the methodology section. In the methodology section, I'd like you to try just 100 words for now. Give it a try. You can do more, but target at least 100 words. Use the QRP online software, and from there, I'll give you some helpful feedback and help you see your mistakes and how to improve. So 100 words in the methodology. Remember, the methodology can be a little bit technical, so don't be shy to try to find the right words. In the QRP system, we have that little yellow box that can help you. Don't be afraid to copy some sentences and then change the detail to match your research. Remember, if you really are doing research, you can do your real topic. And if you're not a research student, you can pick a topic that you're kind of interested in. Use Google Scholar to find one, maybe.